4.30 p.m. Only on the Word Network. This is a Word Network special presentation. things are going to happen. Like me, for you, this has been a rough year. It's been a trying year. It's been a testing year. And through it all, we've learned to trust in Jesus. Through it all, we've learned to trust in God. Tonight is what I'm calling global repositioning, your GPS. I've brought in two of the most authentic prophetic voices in the body of Christ for the 21st century. And they've got an impartation tonight. Not about cars, clothes, and money, but about destiny and where it is that God is getting ready to take you. I need you to do me a favor. Alert every person in your social media that we are on right now. It is the Empowerment Encounter live on the Word Network. I want you to shut down Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat. Tell everybody this is that season. I was talking to my covenant brother, Bishop Rudolph McKissick Jr., in Jacksonville, Florida. He said to me something that blew my mind. He said, Jamal, I am afraid we miss what the real miracle of Christmas is, is that so many of us are talking about the miracle of Christmas was the birth of Jesus. He said, Jamal, that's all wrong. That's not the miracle. The miracle was the conception. The birth was natural. Is that when it is that the seed reached the egg, that was the miracle. What happened in the manger was all a function of the natural. All she had to do was push. But when we talk about plain and talk about blood and talk about agony, we don't see that as a miracle. Whenever it is that you are struggling, it is God giving you an opportunity to partner with what he's already deposited. Something amazing is getting ready to happen in your life. And the only requirement of you is for you to push is already in you. 
It has already grown. It has already manifested. All it has to do is come out of you. And I'm talking to those of you who are pregnant with purpose or pregnant with an idea, pregnant with a concept, and you have no idea that what you've been going through is not warfare. What you're going through is labor pains. Is that this is the last trimester. God's got to do something overwhelming in your life. And I've got enough faith to believe that God is going to do it by the 31st. And I don't know how many of you are struggling or what you are struggling with, but I want you to come into partnership with me tonight. Saying, Pastor Jamal, I believe that by the 31st, whatever I've been struggling with, whatever I've been toiling with is getting ready to shift because I cannot take this into 2017. I've got to drop this load right here, right where I am. You already know by now that the Word Network has been embattled and under siege, but we believe that walking into 2017, God is going to turn it around. The reason why Jesus had to come is he had to feel and identify with our pain. Who knows, but the Word Network had to go through agony and pain so that we could identify more intimately with the grief and the suffering of those of you who are watching around the world. It's easy to praise God when you ain't going through nothing. But when you got to praise God with a monkey on your back, it'll turn you into a zookeeper. And so the whole Word Network is coming in alignment, believing that late in the midnight hour, God's going to turn that bad boy around. I need you to do me a favor. I want to come into agreement with us. I've got a room of intercessors. You don't even know it, but tonight we have a war room. Uh, that we're going into battle for what you want God to do between now and December 31st. It's the last live broadcast for the Word Network for 2016. And I want to write your name, your family name, and your issue on the wall of our prayer room. Do me a favor, would you call right now, 855-730-WORD, 855-730-WORD. It's going to stay on our prayer wall until December 31st, believing that God is going to do it. And I want you to put a seed behind it, saying, Pastor, I believe God so vehemently that I want to put something behind it to say, by December 31st, I'm going to birth something different. Whatever it is that you're struggling with, whether it's drugs, whether it's weight, whether it's alcohol, whether it's anxiety, whether it's cancer, whether it's HIV, whether it's lupus, whether it's an aneurysm, whether it's fibroids, whatever it is, by December 31st, I'm believing God that God is going to stand up in me and do something the enemy cannot stop. Come on, put God to the test. Call right now. 855 word I trust God for a turnaround by December 31st. Come on, let's hear the anthem from the Empowerment Praise Team.
God never calls you when it's convenient. He always calls you when you got something else to do. When Jesus chose the 12 disciples, they weren't sitting idly by. They were engaged in their own manner of business. I want to give you a warning label that when God calls you, it won't match your background. He won't call you when you're looking for something to do. It's right while you're in the middle of something. I found uh, this uh, prophet who was coming before us tonight. Prophet Brian Kahn told me that there's a young man who's really got the oil of gladness all over his life. And I want you to know how committed he is to the things of God. He's just walked away from pastoring one church in two locations to be obedient to the call of God on his life to take the gospel around the world. And his first stop after walking away from pastoring is right here on the Word Network. I'm so honored to have this man of God here. I need you in an overwhelming way. It's his first time here, but I promise you it's not his last time. Welcome, Prophet Jonathan Ferguson. Bless you, sir. Bless you. Why don't you give God the biggest shout you can? Come on, make some noise. No, that's not how you make noise. I said, make some noise. Father, we thank you for your word tonight. We give you glory. We give you praise. You know, we're going to talk to you about the prophetic tonight, and I really sense, you know, I need my audience in the studio to really loose yourself because the anointing you carry tonight is going to be contagious. How many know the anointing doesn't know time or distance? We can be here and God can touch them there all because we yield to the spirit of God on our life. And I believe God wants you to release a praise in this house tonight that's going to send a vibration throughout this network that's going to cause someone's cancer to dry up and cause someone else's tumor to dry up. Now y'all playing with it. Y'all really playing with it. I, I, I really, let me, let me just talk to you. First Samuel, because, I, you know, someone say no more games. Look at someone say, I'm not a sellout. See, the reason the anointing is in here tonight in such an unusual way is when God hand selects a person and picks them up from where they are and push them into a place of favor, it's because he can trust them. And where other people would gossip to get here, lie to get here, sleep around to get here, God to skip over them and pick you. I'm prophesying to you that you just got picked. Tag, you're it. Now, I want to say something. This is not going to be popular. It's not going to necessarily get you excited, which is why I know a lot of people, you felt like I was trying to pull on your praise, and I wasn't pulling on your praise. I was commanding your praise. David said, bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me, bless him. In other words, there's a, there's a certain place you get to when you command your hand to lift when your arm is tired. You command your voice to shout when your voice is going out. You command your feet to dance when your feet... So in 1 Samuel, um, 1 Samuel chapter 10, verse 5. I want to talk about the prophetic movement that's going to hit. I got about 10 minutes, and I promise about, uh, I promise about 50 miracles are going to pop off over in TV land by the time we get done. So I'm going to tell you, it don't take long for a miracle. But before I go to 1 Samuel uh, 10 and 5, in Acts 19, this is what I sense in the room. It says, and special miracles were wrought by the hands of Paul, that even from his body were sent handkerchiefs. In other words, um, he outgrew laying on of hands. And God switched his administration to a higher dimension to where he, he didn't operate in the anointing by the standard by the standard of what church would say. Uh, you, you need two songs and then an announcement and then a preach sermon. God says, I'm out the box tonight. I'm, I'm breaking your rules tonight. God says, I'm going to raise the standard up so high that all the carnal people won't be able to catch up with it. I'm looking for a spiritual people because the level of the body of Christ has been too low. The level in the church has been too low. And while we still church it, the world is looking for something greater than the church and greater than a shout and greater than a service and greater than a revival and greater than a conference. The world is waiting for the manifestation of sons. What is a son? A son. The devil can send 
a storm and a son to walk on the water. I said God is raising up some people that's beyond title and beyond protocol of the religious dead church and say when I stand up, I stand up with power. When I open my mouth, mountains have to move. When I You know, I feel like before the night over, you know, we're fighting against a demon over these airwaves. And I feel like before the night is over, we're going to break the back of that devil. Someone say special miracles. Now, I'm not even allowed to go to 1 Samuel. I may not even ever get to it, but I'm hearing this in my spirit right now. Revelation is 19 and 10 and I'm going to tell you some testimonies and if you stop sizing me up the testimony I tell you of what God did for somebody else is going to hit your house why because Revelation 19 and 10 it says the spirit of prophecy is the testimony of Jesus the word testimony means God would do again someone say God would do again someone say God would do again I'm prophesying to you the miracle that you had last year wasn't your last miracle the breakthrough, you, the breakthrough you saw five years ago wasn't your highest level. I said God will do again. He will heal again. I know they healed. I know God healed you of your cancer and it really remission. But God said, I'm going to remove the cancer again. I'm going to open the blinded eyes again. I'm going to raise the dead again. I will do again. Now, it says God will do again. The testimony. I just felt something break. If you shout, he's going to steal it. Will you stop looking at me like you want me to be your favorite preacher? And when I tell you to shout, you realize it ain't me telling you to shout, but the Holy Ghost told you to shout. Why? Because God shall deliver with a shout. If you open your mouth, I said raise your voice. The testimony, by the time I tell three testimonies, you're going to be running around this room. The testimony that God will do again of Jesus yes. is the spirit of prophecy. What does that mean? Whenever you hear a testimony, the prophetic anointing comes on that testimony for God to do again what he's already done in the life of the person who's telling a testimony. Now, I don't have stuff from 1985. You know, some preachers tell us that one testimony because all they had is one breakthrough. I'm talking, now, y'all going to think I'm crazy. I'm talking about I feel Elijah's anointing. N not the one that calls fire down. I feel that Tishbite anointing. You know, I, you, what's happening in the room, you say, what in the world is a Tishbite? Because you've been slapping your neighbor so long, you ain't read your Bible for real. But the Tishbite is 1 Kings chapter 17. It says, Elijah showed up on the scene. No one who knew his name. No one got his flyer. No one invited him to their conference. But he showed up in the Bible, mentions nothing about his lineage. But the fact that he's a Tishbite. The Tishbite is an anointing where no one gave you a handout. You weren't connected to anyone. No one opened the door for you. You just showed up. I dare you to shout, I'm a Tishbite. What does that mean? You're going to get the job without the resume. You're going to get the business without the degree. God's going to bless you without the middleman. Why? You are Tishbite. You're going to show up in the middle of nowhere. And he said, it's not going to rain until I tell it to rain. Yeah. He had no credibility. You know, we're so political in the church. I call it the ministry mafia. My God. Wow. And we feel like if I don't open the door for you, you won't get in. But I came to prophesy to you, that devil that's been standing at the door, God said, I just kicked the door open. The contract is yours. The church is yours. You ain't about to lease the building. You about to buy the neighborhood. Now, he made some bold claims because he said, it's not going to rain on the whole earth until I say so. And he said, who are you? Who did your ordination? What denomination are you from? I'm not from none of that. Why? Because all of that, have you, oh, didn't you realize that the voices that was are no more anymore? Y'all quiet. Yeah, yeah. 
Y'all quiet. Because there's a spirit on your praise trying to protect the backslidden leader that God demoted. That's why you can't shout. But when you understand that your victory is in your praise, you don't, you, listen, Jonathan, why die with Saul when you can live with David? The anointing is in here to usher you out of that dead religion, usher you out of that dead church, usher you. And it said, what authority? How can you make these claims? And the only authority that he said he had in God was that the fact, he said, I'm Elijah that stand in the presence of God. Someone say, that's what gives me authority. You may not have a car, but you got the presence of the Lord. You may not have a new house, but you got the presence of the Lord. And there's some people that's been pulling the cards. There's some people that's been calling the shots, but they ain't got the presence no more. The Bible says that Samson had the spirit of God on him, but there came a time when the spirit of God departed from him. And the Bible says he shook himself as he did in other times. The only problem was when he shook himself, he did not know the presence had left him. I feel the Holy Ghost. And God said, he said, I'm Elijah that stand in the presence of God. So let me give you one testimony. This just happened um, a couple of days ago. A lady sold $10,000 in my ministry. Just three weeks ago, $10,000 at the word of a prophecy. Didn't hesitate. Why didn't she hesitate? Because just nine months prior to that, she sold 25000 got her dream car, got her, uh, uh, she, I, I saw a file open in the spirit. My God. It says, and the books were open. When she sold the 25000 I saw a file open in the spirit. I said, there's someone you've been believing for that's in prison and their, their papers have been hidden. But God says, because of this seed, they're up for immediate release. She got a call and called me back. And the, the, she was told by the lawyer that the file had been hidden, but they put him up for immediate release. Can I prophesy to you that thing that's been in prison? The Holy Ghost just put you up for immediate release. I didn't say tomorrow. I said immediate release. I didn't say next year. I prophesy immediate release. Immediate release of favor. Immediate release of healing. Immediate release of breakthrough. Immediate release. So she sold that $10,000 because there's some people need to go to the phone right now and sow a seed. There's one lady in particular that need to sow that $10,000 seed because the lady sold $10,000 three weeks ago. And on Friday, this past Friday, I got a call from her. She just solidified a million dollar contract. Now you can look at me like you want me to be your favorite preacher or you can receive a prophetic anointing. That's beyond popularity. A prophetic anointing. That's beyond mega church. God says, I'm done with mega church. I'm about to raise up mega ministry and mega breakthrough and mega deliverance and mega healing. So there, 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 there are 300 people need to go to the phone. Why? I'm talking about the prophetic. That's what I'm talking about. Now, if you're on the spiritual slow bus, then you kind of lost. But he that had an ear... Let them hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. When you sow this seed, why? Because you never come to a prophet. I was going to read 1 Samuel 10, but I, what 1 Samuel 10 did not come until Saul was about to be promoted. I just prophesied. You didn't shout. I said, you're about to be promoted. All right, you're too slow. Look at someone and say, if you don't get it, I'll take yours in mine. And he was about to be promoted into kingship. And he said, hold on, I can't just get promoted like that. He said, how, what must I bring the prophet so that he can show me my way? What is he saying? You never come under prophetic anointing and not sow a seed. I know you've been in a seed line and didn't see nothing happen, but tonight is not that type of night. I feel million dollar contract type of stuff in the atmosphere. You can believe it or not. You've been shown over stuff and hear words preached to you long enough and never saw manifestation this is the night of manifestation someone lift your voice and shout I rebuke that lazy shout listen sow that seed in the name of Jesus 
300 people that need to get a $100 seat and do it now. And everyone that can get what you have. I'm telling you, all I can tell was one testimony. But I'm telling you, there are people that have jobs are pending, promotions are pending. When you release that seat, someone lift your voice to give God the biggest shout you can. I'm believing by faith for an immediate release. Hear me, not just from people coming out of jail. But I wonder if you'll give a word of affirmation in this studio, immediate release from the hospital. And I don't know what relative you've got who has been become bedridden and they don't know what's going to happen. Immediate release, here it is. I hope 500 of you will come into agreement from medication uh, of whatever it is that you've got by the nightstand that God's got enough healing in his hand to take you off medication. Immediate release. I hope you'll receive it. 300 of you ought to shout. Immediate release from your child being labeled with ADD. Immediate release for your brother, your uncle from PTSD. I believe by faith. Immediate release is getting ready to happen. I want every person in the studio lift up that hand right where you are. I speak immediate release. Come on, shout it out loud. Immediate release. I can't hear you. Open up your mouth and cry it. Immediate release. He's going to do it immediately. I want your faith to come in agreement. The man of God has already spoken. Call right now. 855-730-WORD. Your miracle may not be a million. Your miracle may not be $100,000. Your miracle might be an obedient child. Your miracle might be your husband falling back in love. Your miracle might be your church catching on fire. Your miracle might be you finally get out of that apartment and get into the house you need. I'm believing God tonight, thank you prophet, for an immediate release. Heaven is getting ready to do something and I want you to know, I want an immediate release to happen for Flint, Michigan. Uh, Y'all didn't hear what I just said. I said I need an immediate release for Flint, Michigan to get fresh water flowing into Flint, Michigan. Let's give him glory for immediate release. He's holy, come on. I can't hear you. I need you to bless him with the fruit of your lips. I need you to magnify him like you know an immediate release is on the way. I need you to holler under our God like you know in just a few days it's getting ready to turn around. We're still in agreement that by December 31st an immediate release is going to happen in your life. It's going to happen for your family. It's going to happen for your finances. It's going to happen for your health. It's going to happen for your child. An immediate release. Everybody in the studio just shout it out loud. Immediate release. That's what we're believing God for. If you're believing God for the exact same thing, allow me to write it on the war room. Allow me to put it on our prayer wall. Allow me to get the intercessors to put your name right on the intercessory journal. 
I need you to call right now, 855-730-WORD. How the whole world is spinning out of control. How to know that today the electoral college converged. How today a whole lot of people are trying to figure out what's going to happen with China and with Russia. A whole lot of people are trying to figure out how will Haiti rebuild. A whole lot of people here are worried trying to figure out what will happen for the future of the Word Network. It is amazing how short America's attention span has gotten. Is that it has in fact been reduced to the lifespan of Snapchat. That after we see the picture, we forget. And I came really just to remind you that there is a crisis. And I'm not talking about Syria. I'm not talking about uh, Lebanon. I'm not even talking about the pipeline in Dakota. I'm talking right up the road in Flint, Michigan, uh, where children have been contaminated with water and nobody been sent to jail. Nobody's been held accountable. And we're going on as if it doesn't matter. I want to thank Kevin Adele and the Word Network. Uh, they partnered with us many months ago when we first learned about this tragedy. And one of the ombudsmen, one of the people who've been on the front line is my dear covenant brother, Pastor Tillman. And when the cameras went away, his passion did not. When the news stopped showing it, his conviction stayed right on the front line. And I want you to know this studio is filled by the grace of God with healthy people from Flint, Michigan that God kept alive and kept in the palm of his hand. Pastor Tim, and tell us what's happening in Flint, please. Well, first I'd like to say that nothing has changed. You have very, very much been clear as uh, what our uh, circumstances are as this present time. The children are going back to school. Uh, they have behavior issues. They've been kicked out of school. Uh, but no why? Time because they have lead in their system. Yes. Uh, everyone knows it, you know it, I know it, but the school system have not necessarily set policy in place to aid that particular problem at this time. So we hear a lot of complaints from even babes that are being kicked out of latch keys because they can't control them, because wow. they can't sit still. Uh, what our elderly, we still are concerned about their health and recovering because they don't have clean water. Uh, many people are having issues with their memory and loss. Uh, wow. th there's so many pockets of medical issues that are going on in our city. We can't even chase them because we don't have anyone to really herald the latest concerns. Yes. The last thing we have heard of a disease called Shangela uh, that deals with uh, nausea to your stomach, blood in your stool. I mean, things are worsening as we speak. Wow. Uh, the concern is we have no one to really herald it to the world to say we're still here. We're still yeah. suffering yeah. as we were in January when it went national, as it went in February when you came to help us to get this message across the United States of America and abroad. Uh, we are in the same shape. We are in direst need of someone to say, we're <coughs> gonna do something about this problem. Yes. Yes. Uh, so at this present time, we're thankful to God for the partners that have come, such so yourself. You brought loads of truck. We wanna say yeah. thank you, Dr. Bryant. Absolutely. Amen, for being a man of your word yes. and bringing support with you. Yes. Uh, we're thankful to the Lock Carry. Uh, foreign mission board who came along with us to help us aid the citizens of Flint each day we are taking water to the doorsteps of those who are needed to boys uh, girls clubs to uh, senior citizen home to mentally ill places uh, to make sure they have the water they need they're partnering with us nurseries that are brought wow. because it's not part of their budget to buy water right. they were just trying to take care of children take care of their particular tenders so uh, these needs are what we're trying to do every day to provide we're thankful because we're able to continue to keep doing this work day by day because people as yourself and those out there that have been continuing to write checks and send the mail to say, listen, this is just my little tithe to help you. Right. It has gone a very long way and we're yes. still working on the firing line to do our best. Thank you so much. Amen. I want uh, you to know uh, that the Word Network stands with Flint, Michigan. Uh, we are committed until something breaks, something turns around. In the first 100 days of 2017, Hallelujah. I'm coming Hallelujah. back to Flint, Michigan. Amen. And I'm not coming Hallelujah. by myself. Yes, but the God. troops are going to come. Praise God. I, I Praise brought, God. The last time I was there, I brought 100,000 bottles of water to Flint, Hallelujah. Michigan. Yeah. Uh, but it wasn't enough. It's not just drinking water. They need water to bathe in. They need water to wash their clothes. They need uh, water for their babies all to cook. Thank you, First Lady. And so I need you to help me. When I go back in the first 100 days of 2017, I don't want to go empty-handed. Uh, but I want to put stickers on that water so they know that the Word Network was there. Would you help us with the Word Network? Stand in the gap. I want you to call right now, 855-730-WORD, 855 -730 730 word. I got to be honest. I got to operate with integrity. This is my friend. I like him, but I love his wife. 
His wife is the one doing the real work. I, and she's really she been is. holding up the banner. She is. I, God I, I the thank glory. God for this woman of God Hallelujah. who's really in the trenches. So please don't do it for us. Do it because his wife asked you to do it. Uh, but I want you to call right now. 855-730-WORD. Do something for a community. We do so much abroad, but we got to take care of home. Uh, we got to take care of what's happening in our nation, in our country. Y'all tell Trump, we can't wait on him. We got to look to the hills from whence cometh our help. 855-730-WORD. God is still holy, and we give him all the glory. Do something for Flint, Michigan tonight. about what we can do for somebody else. God never blesses people who are selfish. He only blesses people who are selfless. Every person who it is that you brought something for so far had strings attached. They could reciprocate the favor. But today we're asking you to come into partnership for Flint, Michigan. You've never been there. You won't vacation there. You don't know anybody there. But to exercise the compassion of Christ, I want you to step up to the table. The reason why nobody is saying anything about it is the majority of the residents are black people. I know y'all don't want to deal with it, but that's the reality. And if we don't take care of us, nobody else will. I need you to call right now, 855-730-WORD. Listen to me. It is way, way, way too much tes testosterone up in this pulpit. Uh, we need a rose with all these thorns. Uh, and there's an incredible woman of God. Uh, she's my adopted daughter. I love her to life. I, I believe that God has anointed her for the next generation. This is her very first time on the Word Network. I'm telling you, even if you've never heard of her after tonight, you'll never forget her. Prophetess Valerie Moore, would you warmly welcome my daughter even now? Give God glory for her. Love you. Can we give God praise tonight? Can we give God praise tonight? Come on. Thank you, Jesus. My, I'm going to come from St. John chapter number five. Uh, and there's one scripture. My brother, Prophet Ferguson, said, uh, in this hour that we're in, don't be shocked when God steps over somebody else in order to get to you. That was my confirmation that I'm on the right path tonight. Because if I can talk to you for about 15 minutes, I'd like to talk to you from the subject. I'm the one they overlooked. Yeah, uh, I'm the one they overlooked. St. John says, and the impotent man said, sir, even while I'm sitting here, I have no man to put me in the pool while the water is troubled. He said, but while I'm here, another man steps over me to get into trouble in order to get out of trouble. Uh, they said they're at a pool called Bethesda. And they said in these, in verse number three says, in these lay a great multitude of impotent folk. Uh, I, I, and the Bible says, and the next verse says, and an angel came down. I got a problem with that scripture because everywhere I read in the 66 books of the Bible, very rarely do you see where an angel touches the ground. 
Nobody's going to talk to me in this church. Uh, yeah, come on, come on. And so what I find here is the Bible says an angel came down. An angel came down to where, prophet? Is to the low place. Uh, some of you are going through turmoil, hell, and different situations, tribulations, and temptations. But can I tell every one of y'all in this studio and those of you watching us across the world that God is getting ready to meet you at your low place. I wish you would talk to me like you mean it tonight. I said God is getting ready to meet you at your low place. And the reason you didn't die in the middle of your storm is because an angel wasn't watching over you, but an angel was standing right beside you. Yes, Lord, in here. I said an angel came to where you were. An angel came to where? An angel came right in the middle of that divorce. I can't get nobody to say nothing. I said an angel came right in the middle of your son and daughter getting in trouble. An angel came right in the middle of the hospital room when the doctor said it was over. I said an angel came right where you are. Look at somebody and say, I got an angel beside me. I wish you would talk to me like you mean it in here. Uh, the next verse says, and a certain man was there. Did you hear what I said? But I got to go back to verse 4 because the Bible says an angel came down. And to do what, prophet? It came down to trouble the water. And the next verse says, and whoever steps into trouble. Oh, y'all didn't hear what I said. I said the Bible says they had to step in the water after the water was troubled. I can't get nobody to say nothing. And the scripture says, whoever steps over into trouble, can I prophesy to everybody in this studio and those of you watching me via television that this season of your life, trouble ain't going to get you dead. Trouble going to bring you out. I wish somebody would talk to me. You're in a place in your life where you need a little bit of trouble. Huh? Oh, my God, because that's where the Lord is going to step on the scene of your life and bring you right in out of the situation that you're in. I dare you to slap somebody and say, trouble didn't kill me, but trouble got me out. Huh? Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Y'all better talk to me in here. Oh, my God. The Bible says, and a certain man was there. Uh, but I'm messed up now because the Bible says, and when Jesus saw him. But I got to go back to verse number three because it says, in these lay a great multitude of impotent folk. But verse number six says, when Jesus saw him. Verse number three says, in these lay a great multitude of impotent folk. But verse number six says, when Jesus saw him, I'm going to keep saying it till you catch it. Uh, verse number three says, in these lay a great multitude of people with the same mess that I'm going through. But verse number six says, when Jesus saw him, verse number three says, in these lay a great multitude of people that are just as broke, busted, and disgusted as I am. But verse number six says, when Jesus saw him, can I tell somebody that God is getting ready to step on the scene of where you are but tell your neighbor say don't get mad at me when God steps over you to get to where I am I wish somebody would scream yes Lord and so the Bible says the Bible says that he looked at the man and he said sir he said will you be made whole and the Bible says he looked said I have nobody to put me into trouble in order for me to get out of trouble. He said but while I'm sitting here another one of these jokers that had the ability, had the capacity, had the means to get me in so that I could get out. I want to stop right there for just a moment and tell you you got Center. 
and said, we're getting ready to hand you the deed to your house because it's been paid in full. $161,000. There are 250 of you on watching me right now with a $120 seed. I feel it in the kapashita bahandi. I feel it on me now. I want you to release that seed. Release the seed and watch God blow your absolute mind. I'm believing that God is going to do it. What an incredible woman of God. Prophet Ferguson, I want you to come. I'm believing that God is getting ready to do some amazing things. How many days you said we have left? 12 days left that God is going to do something in your life. I want to come into agreement. You've got two incredible prophets and one amazing God. And I'm telling you, he gave us the subscription, the prescription. If two or three are touching and agreeing, there I'll be also. The three of us come into agreement for your destiny. We come into agreement for your power. We come into, into agreement for your complete turnaround. And I know he can do it. I've seen him do it. And what he's done for me, I know he'll do it for you. I want you to call right now, 855-730-WORD. 855-730-WORD. I want you to be in a posture to receive right where you are in that living room. Extend that hand like something is getting ready to be dropped in it. Those of you in the military barrack, extend that hand like something's getting ready to be dropped in it. Those of you in that college dormitory getting ready for finals, something's getting ready to be dropped right into your hands. How for just 60 seconds, prophet, what is God declaring is going to happen in the next 12 days? The next 12, God is saying, you know, there's been so much stigma about, around money in the prophetic, but if you read the Bible, the Bible says when John the Baptist was preaching the gospel in the wilderness, he was eating locusts and honey. Now, why is that? Because the Bible says in the book of Joel that he would, that he would restore the years that the locust and the yeah. palmer worm and yeah. the canker worm have eaten. Yeah. Why does he mention those insects? Because those are the ones that eat at your harvest. So when John the Baptist was in the wilderness under prophetic anointing, here's the revelation. When God sends a prophet, he sends a prophet to eat up what's been eating your harvest. And I sense an anointing in this room to devour that which has been devouring your money and that which has swallowed up your economy and swallowed up your favor. I release and declare according to the book of Job over your life that that enemy will cough up and vomit up your harvest. That enemy will vomit up your breakthrough. That the Holy Ghost will cause that that time I do to break Cause a sickness in the stomach of your enemy that he will vomit up your harvest in Jesus name we seal it I'm believing that it's going to happen I need you to do me a favor come into agreement 855-730 word we've got to do something about Flint Michigan and you don't even know what you make happen for somebody else God will make it happen for you I want to salute and celebrate prophetess Valerie and prophet Ferguson help me give God some glory and I want you to thank God for Brother A.G. and the Empowerment Singers. And I want you to know the Word Network will not be defeated. We stand on one promise. If God be for us, who can be against us? And I'm believing, watch this. Tonight I didn't talk about saving the Word Network. I talked about Flint, Michigan. Because I believe if we go into agreement for Flint, God going to take care of the Word Network. Call right now, 855 730 word 855 730 word God's gonna fill you up when you empty yourself out God bless you the best is yet to come this has been a word network special presentation brought to you by the friends and partners of the word network all over the world but everybody in here this morning needs somebody. And I don't care who you are, you're not independent. I don't stop here today.